Good morning, Tato. Ko Stu McBerry and I. Um, I see some. This is a wonderful turnout, really, because of the issues that are on the table today. And um, <clears throat> awesome that we've got some members of Parliament come in here, and we get a little bit of weight and see what your direction is. But the Fano, it's all about the Fano, and, and this is what I see: addiction creates disconnection. So, kaakiti to the Fano. My name is actually Reg Rehana, Kia ora whanau. Um, but um, I carry the name Stuart McBaron, all because of legislation and the way drugs played out over the years and I'm third generation trying to sort my shit out, you know what I mean? Apologies. But I had the opportunity to... I'm quite glad that I, 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 I got this umbrella of addiction over me, drugs, alcohol, 26 years. Reason being is because I found out what life was really about. That was through treatment and I heard treatment works. Treatment definitely works, otherwise we wouldn't have... Um, our rangatira speaking, representing us, you know, at, on, on the world stage. So treatment works. We all have this in us. Like, I, I don't know how many people in here have tried drugs and alcohol or it's had something that made them silly over their time, you know, done something that's stupid because they had a beer and maybe too much, too many wines after work. Everyone's affected by drugs and alcohol, our whole country. When it comes to the legislation in that, we can see, you know, we can journey right back to Honiheke cutting down the flag staff and seeing that, oh, these people didn't really do what they were going to say. Biggest, biggest issue I see here today was it's not drugs, it's money. It's unfortunate. Um, but I've, I've, I've seen how people can get well, and we know people can get well, probably so different to what I do, but I know I can get people clean and sober. And I do it very simply by connecting them back with their families, etc., etc., etc. I think it's important that I'd like to bring up, it's not individual, it's not to do with Stu being an addict, it's to do with Stu and his whole family gets affected for generations. And I was affected by generations as well from drugs and alcohol. So I'm at three, third generation trying to break the cycle of violence, alcohol and drugs, gangs, everything, rah, rah, rah. It's still not that easy because then my lady, she's into violence and all this kind of stuff. So what we're dealing with is something absolutely, one human cannot deal with what we're dealing with today. So big ups to the government and what they're heading to do, but we actually all have to be part of this, all of us as a community. So it'd be nice to see all those um, really smart people do all that marketing, like Charlie's Juice and all these things, and who market for the All Blacks, and get this on a national level. So everyone knows, everywhere you turn, posters, everything. It's, it's not 13 to 25, no disrespect brother, because I've been there, it's just as bad, but it's from when, before you're born. So if we start educating all those parents out there now, to go and slowly, slowly, slowly work on this problem ourselves because we're the ones that have to deal with it. You know, my bro just got out of prison, you know what I mean? And here's me trying to, bro, don't go there, don't touch that stuff. Nah, 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 the councillor was wrong. I mean, it's, it's, it's rampant, it's rampant. You're seeing the effects of what? We've got truck drivers and the bread trucks just going hard out in the car parks. You don't know they're on meth. This problem is absolutely massive. I had a ridiculous thought in my mind, why don't we flood the market with meth and legalise marijuana because if we make it like worth nothing, meth worth nothing, there won't be that hunger. Because the problem of getting an addict off meth isn't getting them off the chemical, it's keeping them off it. Because the rolls of cash that you can get out of that industry is phenomenal. It's phenomenal. And you're getting people, I've got clients that are now they're one year, two years into recovery. They've got people knocking on the door, oh bro, I'll give you 20 grand to show me how to do, do your craft, etc, etc. So yeah, this is massive. And I, I, I thought it was down to economics, put everything aside. You know, we have the resources, put the money aside. We have the resources, we have people. We have people. Make meth worth nothing. There is good evidence now, and I'm glad I got into academia because I got to see, oh, these peer-reviewed articles. So that all the doctors and all these people are saying, this is word. So I got to see word on all these different things that were taken out. 1920 Tohunga Suppression Act, all, these, all our knowledge, etc, etc. There's therapeutic benefit in just about every chemical on the planet. Now what's the worst drug? Sugar. So, going back to, obviously I talk a lot and usually don't know what I'm talking about, but for the legalisation of psychoactive chemicals, I believe there's a place, very strongly, there's a place for it. My clinical director at the time when I was working at Capri Hospital, private hospital, funny I even got there. I was going to die if I didn't end up there, funny. I was going to die. Just what I was doing to my family, what I was doing to myself, and what I was doing to the members of the community out there in my car, either wasted or off, you know, off my face. That's not very nice. I'm not alone. 
there's plenty of me causing chaos out there. But when I got the opportunity to get straight and sober, you know, I thought, oh, I started getting back into my culture, learning about, you know, oh, this, this is not too bad. And then I started believing in myself, who I was. I was so disconnected from society through drugs and alcohol, it was phenomenal. So now I'm still working on, you, you don't get out of rehab and it all just falls into place. It's been four and a half years since I'm out of treatment, and man, I'm still working on pulling my little hapu together, you know, and still issues. People still drink, people still take meth, etc., etc. But I, I know how to deal with things, and I get better and better. So it's my job to actually pass this on to my whanau. I sit here as a father, you know, son, uncle, brother, you know, and do I just sit around and watch my, my, my brother beat up his, you know, my sister-in-law? Do I, do I stand around, or do I make a stand myself? There's a lot about actually being brave. Someone was talking about being brave. And um, we all have that ability. Um, one thing I was thinking of was I'm going to forget everything I wanted to say. But there's a part of, you know, I don't know if you've heard of divide and conquer. That's how we'll take over your nation styles. Well, let's just put that aside, change our facade, and let's, let's stand together, unite, stand together, and, and let's conquer this. And so our leaders, you know, it must be a God, gosh damn challenge for you to actually do that. But I still put the challenge out there on behalf of all people sitting here in all Ngāpū and all Māori in New Zealand. Um, because we don't have that right, so we, I hope you use what powers and, and um, resources you have to make the betterment for our people. And that's not just all Māori, that's, that's everyone here, you know. We've got Indian, we've got Chinese, we've had Chinese here gold digging way back, you know. The days when, you know, Captain Cook got here. We've got Indian, we've got the Hindu influence now. And those guys actually have Holy Trinity, where they have marijuana in their, in their um, celebrations. And they, they have an awesome structure of gods. And um, apologies if I don't get it right, but they even have a god called Shiva. that the, he, he goes home after work and relaxes on, on marijuana. I'm not saying it's the only way, but you've got cultures that think differently. So is it difference? Is this about difference? We've seen in Peru, we've seen in Switzerland, we've seen so many places and it's peer reviewed and it's all there and it's legit. This is word that it's working, you know, that this decriminalisation works. But we do have to take heed and I have to take heed too because I come from this side of wanting to make it legal. But I have to take heed of the people that are up there seeing it on a different level, see stuff we don't see. And there must be a wee bit of risk involved. But can we learn from the people that have already shown us the lessons, you know, they've already decriminalised. And we've seen a lot of change, you know, and we might see less people in those Salvation Army beds, hopefully, but um, there's people probably sitting here that know there's a solution, but we just can't get it to the people. Finishing up, yeah, I, I believe strongly, and for all the people, and is, is it, do we fill out heaps of paper and do it again on Armistice Day, 11-11, and we just write again and try to petition that this works? You know, it was so awesome to see on television that lady came in, the first lady to get medical marijuana. Oh my gosh, she was in a wheelchair. She wasn't going to go out there and do anything amazing. But what's so wrong about having, you know, relaxing? Alcohol is proven to be one of the worst psychoactive chemicals on the planet what it can do and destroy your families, you know, but we're still allowed to drink it and I've noticed a lot of people like to have their drinks Friday, Saturday night, you know, because they work hard. But in this hand, if you had something else that was just as good for you and relaxing but just didn't cause as much dependency and, and get you to smash your misses and all that kind of stuff, would you think that would be a better option? And then I'll just go into, what about oxycodone? Does, anyone, does everyone understand like, the, the problem with prescription drugs now? So we're starting to see the people in rehabs with pr um, problems with pres prescription drugs. Oxycodone, I could be wrong because I'm not a doctor, but it's, it's, it's oh, I don't know the brand name, but it's medical heroin. So it's an absolute epidemic in, in the States right now because people, 253, prescription, 253 million prescriptions of that oxycodone in the States. And that's one of the most addictive chemicals on the planet. That's interesting because, you know, in the industry, the brain doesn't know the difference between, uh, well, a doctor and a drug dealer. It's just another drug. So we've got all these people that are scared of being addicts and all that, and they can't even put their hands up because they're addicted to prescription drugs. Their doctor gave them. So you, why doesn't the doctor 
you know, sell a um, medical marijuana that's actually proven to be more beneficial. Things like magic mushrooms, you know, you might have seen them at Broadwood School underneath the bark and all that kind of stuff. All the fun stuff aside, it's a very therapeutic chemical and it's been proven. And it's strange that you can actually get well from addiction through drugs. It's proven. But unfortunately, it's illicit. It's an illicit chemical, so we cannot use it for, to, to heal our people. Strange thing is, many cultures since the dawn of man have used hallucinogenics to help their, their families, villages get well. You'll find in Peru, there's this uh, chemical called ayahuasca, and it's, it's, it's a hallucinogenic, but they've, they've got no problems of, of um, depression, etc. all this in their little tribes. Everyone would go along to the shaman, not just the person with the problem, the whole family. So the whole family got well, you know? So there's chemical, I, I, I just quite don't understand why we've got these ones, chemicals here, uh, illegal, and then we've got these chemicals here that are not illegal. And when it comes to harm, we've kind of proven through science, um, there is definitely issues and we can track why and how legislation is the way it is. But this is 2016, whānau. And even my parents, I got brought up on this European side. Mother, whānau, sweet man, we're all good to legalise. But when you start getting like people like my, my, my parents who are like uh, the, the white kind of brought up English, New Zealanders styles, and they're starting to go, why don't they legalise marijuana? There's something going on. So I think we might find that there's, there's a new whakaaro, there's a new mindset out there in the world that, hey, it's not so bad. So I, I support it and... I'm kind of the guy that stops you, you know? I'm kind of the guy that gets to me. The reason you come to me is really because it's a problem. You can put methamphetamine, follow the table, it does nothing. No, no problems at all. You get it over here, put it on me, it becomes a problem. But I never knew, you know, so that's why I say from the education, I didn't know when I was going to drink at 14 years old with my mates and go hard and then it's a tray and then it's a keg and then it's all this, that I was actually creating dependency within myself. So there was 26 years later, I got it, I clicked. I thought, oh wow, why didn't I get told that a little bit sooner? So I believe legislating um, or reclassifying particular psychoactive chemicals has to be addressed, definitely has to be addressed because it doesn't make sense that, that they have medical benefit and it's proven, but we're not using them. You know, so I'm for it, and um, if anything's a problem, it's only a problem when it becomes a problem, and then you address it. Well, I think we've got a problem here now, and we need to address it, and we actually need to, this is on such a high level, because we're on the street, that it's, it's really, you know, if you're getting rid of all that green stuff, it's actually not as bad as the meth, we're actually going to have no green stuff, and there's all this white stuff that's going to be flooding the market. One last thing, sorry is to go with the methamphetamine. As I think the restrictions on it have caused the, the hunger to actually want it more and more and more and more. I wasn't really going to talk about flooding the market with methamphetamine. Just Cool. Thank you, Farnate.